Um, Mariam, are you going to assist me? Um, so, hi everyone. I hope that you are well. Um, for careers, tutorials, or for careers exercises, it is week two. I am glad that you all made it um, to week two. You only have one careers exercise for this week, which is good. Um, and it is a tools for remote work exercise. So just an announcement from Mariam and from Mariam and I, we are um, starting something called office hours, which is when you all can reach out to us at specific times. And just if you need help with exercises, if you need to talk, if you need assistance with anything, support, then we've allotted specific times that anyone can reach out and you can we can talk over slack or you can um if you want to schedule a g a google meet call or just a call over slack whatever works we can do that so i'm going to drop the times in the careers channel on slack um and yeah we i'll start presenting in like a second so you've already received or you should already have accessed this week's careers exercise it's quite a lot more important than i think the other exercises have been because it's more practical and everything that we are covering in this exercise is practical things that you will have to attain skills on to take forward in your working career. So I'm just going to start with my presentation. Mariam, can you just let me know that it's working, please? Sure, I can see your screen. Is it? So yeah. is the presentation working? Yes, it is. Okay. So, yeah, tools for remote work. So the tools that we are covering in this exercise is Slack, Notion, and Calendly. And you are mostly going to be applying for remote jobs as you exit the training. Um, that is our goal at the end of the day for you to get into a good global level high impact job, as we've been saying for the past few weeks. And um, remote work basically means you will have to find other means of communication um, beyond speaking in person, which is pretty much not how things work in the world any longer. Um, if you are a university graduate or if you are a final year student in university, then you probably are familiar with working remotely because things moved online with the start of the pandemic. But I think these tools might be a bit unfamiliar, although you've started using Slack. So that's what we're covering. So, yeah, you're quite used to Slack now, I hope, after two and a half weeks of working um, with Ten Academy in your training. So it's basically just a messaging app organizations, businesses, schools, universities use it. It's just great for managing a large amount of people and making sure that people work together as a team. So there are a few functions, the sidebar, which is where you um, access your conversation. So this is in the left hand corner. Um, it shows you which channels you have joined, direct messages, notifications, and you can compose new messages in there. Channels are probably the most important aspect of Slack, and you are, or you should be in quite a few different channels for the 10 Academy training. So it allows different people to work together as one unified group. So we've got a channel for the careers exercises, which will which means all information about careers exercises are only in that channel, which is the point of channels so that different information and in different groups are working organized and, you know, having all the information together would just not work 
well it wouldn't be organized it would be confusing um i've provided a link as always we will be providing the slides so here uh, this link will show you how to create a channel in slack um and to follow these steps and Slack has pretty cool messaging options. You can attach files to messages. You can mention teammates, edit messages, even after you've sent them, send audio notes and also format messages. So Notion might be a bit more complicated. I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with Notion, um, but it is quite a useful tool. Um, and it is going to be a large part of your exercise. So there are the options of linking Notion to Slack. Um, so you can link your Notion to your Slack workspace, which is um, using the Slack app directory, click updates at the top right of any page, connect Slack channel, log into your Notion account and choose the right channel to get updates. And also I didn't mention this, but Notion is basically an organizational software app um, information management is how i would phrase it um, which helps different companies universities schools business um, organizations to properly um, divide information divide tasks updates it just makes things work more smoothly and i think that understanding how to use notion properly is really important because you can do everything on Notion. Everything that you would have done in real time, writing things down on paper, sending emails, it basically removes the need to send emails, to share, um, you know, to write things down on paper. None of that will be necessary if you can use Notion well. Um, you can create a public page in Notion. Um, it's basically the same as sharing anything. Um, so each page that you create has a unique URL. You simply have to click share at the top right of the page, click copy, and then the URL will be copied to your clipboard. And it's as simple as that. Um, embedding an app into Notion is, I believe, probably the most important um, function that Notion has. So you can actually embed apps like Google Drive, Figma, um, Slack, as you mentioned, and uh, quite a few other apps, which once again, as you're working remotely, will be important for you to use and be familiar with and being able to link your Notion or embed Notion pages to those apps will just allow you to keep all information in one space. So Calendly might be the newest app or software to you all, although since we've handed out or since you've had access to the assignment, I think most of you have learned quickly how to use it because I think Mariam and I have both received quite a few um, notifications that people are starting the assignments. So basically it is an app or software depending on how you're using it to schedule appointments, meetings, and events. You do not need to phone, text, email anyone any longer for scheduling appointments. Simply, um, if you have a Cal Calendly account, you just put your availability in the account, send the link to someone, and it will show them your available time. They can choose the time that suits them the best, and then, all the unnecessary and irrelevant conversation has been removed from the equation. And then the last part of this presentation and also I think a part that is important and it will be covered in your assignment, your exercise, and Mariam will go on to speak about that, but um, you will have to complete an onboarding process. So. Um, if you get into a job or when you get into a job after you have completed your training, you will most likely be onboarded onto a new team, but this is a good way for you to understand the process and eventually you might have to onboard 
new employees onto your team. So it's basically a human resources process. It helps new employees to become used to the organization, the company that they're working for. It helps them to understand what their job requirements or positions are. A, the onboarding process varies from company to company. It can be job offers, introductions to the team, welcome package, job training, as well as the probationary period, which is usually, usually one to three months. Um, it is important that employees have a good and positive onboarding experience because hiring employees are very expensive. It's an expensive task to undertake for any company. So if you know, they have a bad experience at the beginning, they are more likely to quit more quickly, which is quite a lot of wasted money. So the exercise will help you to understand why it's important. And Maria will go on to um, present uh, slides. Maria? All right, thank you. Are you Carly. ready? Yeah, let me see if I can present from here. If not, you would present from me. Yeah, I've I've got your stuff ready, so it's okay if you can't. Is it coming up? Oh uh, yeah, it says you're presenting, so we'll see. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, yeah, good to have you can see your easy. screen. So as Carrie has already explained, she has explained, um, she has pretty much talked about the tools you're going to be needing or using in this exercise. <clears throat> and I'm pretty much going to be giving the exercise solution on what we're expecting from you. So we essentially have three questions. We essentially have three questions for you to answer. Question, more is, uh, question one is more of the technical part and question two and three is almost like a report. So question one, these are the list of instructions there and I'm going to take it step by step. The first thing you're supposed to do is to schedule a 45 minute Google meeting starting at this time, then send the link to this meeting to either me or Carrie. The next thing you're going to do is to schedule a meeting using Calendly via the link that has been included. Then you're going to make sure your Google Calendar can access this um, meeting slots that you already have with Calendly because it will be embedded in your Google Calendar. I mean, the Calendly meeting slots will be embedded in your Google Calendar. So you need to take a screenshot of that meeting slot in your Google Calendar, then keep that aside. The next thing, now you already know how to use Google Calendar, Google Meet, and then add your Calendly meeting slots to your Google Calendar. So the next thing you're going to do is to create a Slack workspace. We're already familiar with Slack already. So you're going to create a Slack workspace. You can easily just name it, name that workspace your name. So Michael can easily just say Michael PLC. Margaret can be like Margaret and Co. You can just name it anything you want. Then you're going to create four new channels. It is important to know that Slack already has its own like automatically created channels, but we want you to create additional four channels, just like the one we have that we communicate through. You can easily just say team A, team B, team C, team D, or team one, two, three. Just make sure you create an additional channel, which it should be four in total. Then you're going to invite both Carrie and I to your workspace. That way we know that you've essentially created this workspace. Now you already know how to use Google Calendar, Google Meet, Calendly, and Slack. The next thing you're going to work with now is Notion. You have to set up a tax board in Notion using the carbon format. I'm going to be coming, I'm going to be speaking on the carbon format in a bit. On this tax board, you should list 10 key exercises you have completed for this training in week one, along with key feedback you've created, you've received from your tutors. We're going to get to this in a bit. So after you've created this tax board 
and you've put in the details we need, which is the key exercises and the comment you got from your tutors, you're to link this tax board that you've created on Notion to your Slack workspace. The Slack or workspace you've created from bullet three, you're going to now link in this tax board you've created on Notion to it. You can do this using the Slack app directory. Please make sure this is the um, workspace you have invited I and carry into. Then the last thing you're going to do now is to make sure you create a public page for the tax view on Notion, providing the link of that um, public page to your Slack channel. So now let's get into the carbon format that we're going to use to create the tax board in Notion. So the carbon format or method is simply a workflow management that gives you a visual and detailed representation of your tax. It's pretty much helps to track your progress and new productivity. So normally, the Kanban board comprises of three major components. As you can see on the image I've included, you have the to-do column, you have the doing column, and you have the done column. So the to-do pretty much would include all the things you're supposed to do. The doing will be the things you're already doing, you're already working on them. And obviously the done will be the tax you have completed. So how do you create a carbon bond on motion? I have included a YouTube video here for you to watch. Although the YouTube video is about four minutes, but not to waste much of your time. The main explanation on how to create this carbon, um, on how to create a tax board using the carbon format will start exactly at one minute for five seconds. Now that has covered all you need to do with question one and like i said the question one is the technical part it's just the practical part of this um exercise to know how to really use these tools that carrie has explained previously and like the if most of you as most of you would have like access to the um instruction document already the essence of this exercise is pretty much to make you very much familiar with these apps or softwares and make sure by the time you get into your remote space, if you're being taxed to create an onboarding document for a new colleague that is not familiar with remote tools, you would be able to explain better. So question two and three is pretty much the onboarding, onboarding document you are creating for your new colleague. So we're expecting a Google slide, not more than six slides, answering questions two and three. So number two is a step-by-step -step plan showing your colleague how to embed a new tax in your Notion carbon board and move it from backlog to active and complete. I'm going to explain. Remember in question one, you are essentially supposed to create a tax board using the carbon format and you have to add 10 activities you've done throughout the um, trial week one and include the comments you got from your tutors. So now you've done that, you've practicalized. How would you explain this to a new colleague? So that is why we're asking you a step-by-step -step plan. We want to see how much you can simplify this um, process to your colleague. So how would you explain this process? How would you explain to a colleague to how to embed a new tax in your Notion Carbon board? So you're going to show this, um, you're going to explain how you're going to, you're going to explain or you're going to tell your colleague how to move tax from backlog which is obviously the things you want to do to active the things you're working on which is doing and to complete which is obviously done so because you've practicalized already please explain to us step by step how you're going to tell a new colleague to do that thing you've done in the past if that makes sense so the number three is pretty much a brief explanation show oh before i get to that your step-by-step -step plan can easily be in bullet points or in charts. Any way you really like, any way you can really simplify it for this new colleague. Just make sure it is very comprehensive and easy to digest. So the third question is a brief explanation showing your colleague how to add a new member to their workspace on Slack. Remember your workspace, you've added an anchor to it. So how are you going to explain to your colleague that, oh, this is how I was able to add Carrie and Miriam. We are not necessarily going to say this is how you're going to add Carrie and Miriam, but you just need to explain though. Oh, as a new colleague, if you're going to add a new member to your workspace, this is how to go about it. Step one, 
click on step two do you get so you're pretty much going to explain these things in a simplified manner to your new colleague so this um google slide document that won't be more than six slides is pretty much containing you answering questions two and three based on the tax based on the way you answered question one in order for us to show in order for you to show that you've really done this you're going to include other things like screenshot of the meeting you scheduled with calendar remember remember after you've um after you've picked a meeting slot on calendly you're going to make sure google calendar has access to it so it will be embedded in your google calendar then you're also going to include a screenshot of your workspace this workspace that you've invited carrie and i to and this workspace that you've created for add additional channels to it you're also going to give a screenshot of your notion board your notion board which contains this um tax board using carbon formats showing the 10 uh, activities and the feedback you've got from your tutors so i just want to take it again from the top question one question one is the practical part it's pretty much making you familiar with these tools and you're going to give us evidence at the end of the day then questions two and three is pretty much you explaining the the things you have done in question one but to a new colleague so it's it's a form of um manual let's just put it like that so it's your google slide document is pretty much you creating a manual for a new colleague so if new colleague come if new colleague comes to your work um space with time you're pretty much going to just share this google slide and be like oh go through that you would know how to do this and that additional information um, the deadline for this exercise is on Saturday 21st. Only Google Slide is acceptable. Also, please go through the resources we've included in this, in this, uh, in the instruction. I mean, the Google Doc, um, you already have that contains the instructions to this exercise. These, um, the resources included there have been like thoroughly searched for. So you please go through them. They are going to definitely help you provide a better solution to this exercise also please take your time and read the instructions i intentionally brought some of the instructions here so that it will be clear but at the same time go through them and really digest it so you're going to give better results and because you're going to be adding i and um, carry to your slack workspace if you'll be needing our email addresses and you're not familiar with it this is it and i think that will be all thank you for listening so we can take questions now Thank you, Mariam. Yeah, questions, please go ahead. Raise your hand, drop it in the chat. Are you referring to this way? Are you referring to when it should be handed in? Um, so on Google Glass, oh, no. No, okay. I think he's Can asking just... about the meeting. Yes, it should be. You should, you should schedule it at that time, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. We're not necessarily cool. going to attend the meeting. We just want to, um, we just want you to know how to schedule a meeting. Even if obviously you must have done it in the past, but just to be sure. I don't know if that has yeah, answered we, your question. We are doing this exercise to really prepare you to. Yes, Michael, we will share the slide in the careers. Yes, exactly that time. The slides will be shared as always. Are there any other questions? Okay, so um, can we just find out from everyone how the careers exercises has been going? We want to know if you feel like you've improved your skills in the non-technical stuff. So either raise your hand or I'm just going to choose randomly. You just need to speak for two minutes about 
how you've been doing with the careers exercise and i also want to know we also want to know what you would like to focus on with careers exercises in the coming weeks so either raise your hand or i'll start choosing people randomly okay thank you michael anyone else okay rafa you here do you have any thoughts on the if you can hear me do you have any thoughts on the exercises and what would you like to see in the coming weeks i can thank you for the presentation um it was um really helpful so yeah i mean um I, i'm not that kind of people who are just uh, feel like uh, you know when we have the exercise of uh, find a job three real words uh, three real jobs in, uh, in the world it's like it's for me like a little bit um, uh, kind of difficult because i just when i see many advertisements and try to just uh, do that search and filter in i mean um kind of uh, confusing sometimes but yeah i mean i had to i had to learn these skills because i know that it's uh, the only way that uh, someone will find a job uh, by the end of the day and yeah i mean i see they are really uh, the kind of uh, assignments and tutorials that we need so that we can just uh, um, find a job by the end of the day yeah okay cool um faith okay okay faith i'll come to you now did you can you please tell speak you raise your hand yeah thanks uh, i wanted to share like how this career exercises helped me yeah uh, mainly uh, i would mention about like the exercise about uh finding a job like um since now we usually use these online platforms to apply for jobs so like i learned to like explore many things uh before considering uh applying for a, a job online yeah this this exercise really helped me in others thank you Thanks so much. I'm glad to hear. Um, okay, Faith, do you have anything to say about the careers exercises? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, thank you. Um, I I find them um, very helpful. Uh, like for example, the, the recent one that we did about uh, uh, three re awards are jobs. Um, they helped me to learn uh, new things. Um, I've been on LinkedIn, but um, uh, with that exercise, it was my first time using uh, LinkedIn search like uh, name and then uh, uh, job title of the person I'm looking for. So that's something new I learned um, basically because of that exercise and also um, uh, <clears throat> narrowing my uh, my search of jobs based on uh, like uh, requirements and uh, especially like uh, the um competitions they are looking for um uh, not not only uh looking for every job with that title you think you want and then apply for that so i think uh, they will help us and also um <clears throat> this exercise that we're going to do um uh, it's important that we uh we learn uh, these tools uh because at workspace uh, we we uh we use them and also uh i'm i'm looking forward to uh to using those uh, tools that i never used before like uh calendry and uh, notion uh yeah but uh, for slack i'm good uh but uh yeah looking forward to learn uh, and those new tools and also uh usually i i expected uh those onboarding documents there will be uh responsibilities of like uh recruitment team or uh, people's team but uh, since i'm going to 
to write that document for like uh, someone new at the company. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you have gotten something out of it. Um, Biniam, if you're here, if you can speak, please tell us how the careers exercises have been going for you. You do not need to speak very long, just a few minutes so that the careers team can figure out if we need to help you somewhere else, please. Okay, Biniam's not replying. Margaret, yes, go ahead. Um, personally, I have enjoyed the career exercises. Um, I have personally learned so many um, sites to look for jobs and also the peer mentoring exercise was also very beneficial. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Um, Biruk, if you're here and you can speak, please let us know how the careers exercises have been going for you. Okay, um, Dag Moi, sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name properly. Uh, Johannes. I'm not saying that right. I'm sorry. Um, can you please tell us, um, if you can, how the careers exercises have been going for you? Hello, Kerry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, I found it very helpful uh, talking about the career exercises. I found it very helpful, uh, even though we come here for the technical exercises and concerned about them, these career exercises are are the things that that shape us to become a better uh, person in planning and making our careers take a long step. So we thank you for that and keep, uh, I keep looking forward to the. Thank you. That is good to know. Um, DA, if you are here and you can speak, please tell us. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, can hear you. Okay, How are the exercises been going? So they've been going very well. So I've learned a lot from uh, the peer mentoring exercise. The the real world job exercise, uh, I've learned a lot from them. Uh, this exercise, I haven't started it, but I look forward to learning a uh, lot from it. Okay, thank you. That's good to hear. Um, Celine, if you are here. Okay, Mariam? Uh, okay. I think you told me. Um, okay, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. When you're done, I'll speak. Mm, okay. Uh, well, I've uh, learned a lot from the career exercises. Um, I've seen uh, how, especially on the on searching three real world jobs, I uh, got to see what's expected uh, from an entry uh, from an entry level. Uh, Emil, a data engineer actually, and uh, I got to see what the real world expects me when I'm out there. So I've driven out uh, many insights from that and also um, I've understood how I can uh, narrow down my uh, job search and uh, not uh, just applying for every uh, data engineering job, but the, uh, where I can find an entry level job um, more likely, so uh, I've come uh, to see and understand those things uh, on the past uh, career exercise. Great, thank you, Mariam. 
Yeah, I really wanted to say, obviously, like, thank you for the feedback. But also, if there is anything you're struggling, particularly with these exercises, you could also um, share or talk about it. Um, what's the word? It doesn't have to be rosy, because obviously we grade and then we see, like, some of these errors and then we give feedback. But if there's anything you're struggling in particular, if you can't, like, share here, yeah, you can totally like reach out to us, mention on the career exercise um, channel on Slack, and then we just want to move forward as a batch. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yes, um, I completely agree with that because um, I think that you've been learning over the past few days that this is not a competition we want everyone to get through. So if you have issues, or if you have any advice, put it in the careers channel so that everyone can see it and everyone can benefit or you can get help. So, yeah, and we start in the office hours so you can um, get assistance there. Um, Nardos, can you please, if you hear, yeah, can you please speak about your experience with the careers exercises? Oh, uh, hi. Hello. Uh, the career hi. exercise has been helpful. Uh, I, can, I, I can say that it wasn't easy finding entry-level jobs. Uh, sometimes I thought I found the perfect entry jobs and somewhere out there it says three, three plus years SQL experience and that was very annoying or sometimes I would find I, I would need to be a resident of some country and everything. So it has taught me to look at the at the things very carefully before applying and how to look for them. And it, are, it has also shown me what skills are really required. I uh, first, uh, before this assignment, I, I assumed that I would need some skills, but seeing at the actual required skills, that made me be focused on those skills more instead of them just a vague understanding of what is required. So yeah, it was helpful. Thank you. Um, that's really good to hear. Um, Shaika, Kevin, can you please speak about your experiences with the careers exercises? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear you? Yeah, so career exercise were really helpful to me. One particular example I could give is the what we did about finding 3D jobs. So it helped me to, to know some platform that could help me in terms of job searching. Also about peer mentoring, it helped me to expand my connection because I we get to know each other with my mentee, what is our interest. So it helped me to know what to know more about him and to expand my connection. Yeah, thanks. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, does anyone have specific comments about the peer mentoring exercises as Mariam just dropped in the chat? Did anyone experience problems understanding the peer mentoring exercise? Okay. Um, Tadese Kabede, can you please, just for a few minutes, tell us how your experience with the careers exercises have been. If you can speak, if you can hear me, or drop it in the chat. But preferably, please speak out loud. Okay. Um, Meren, if you are here, can you please chat to us about the career exercises? Um, peer mentoring, free real world jobs, for a few minutes so that we can see how you've been doing. Okay, Dese, please go ahead. Hello, Kerry. Can you, hear me? can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Actually, uh, what I am proud of this 
non technical <coughs> activities is uh, just i am thinking as we are searching a job even we are in the job it it feels that yeah because it aid us on last time we we have seen how the jobs are searched even we have seen the platforms on which the jobs are posted before i only know the linkedin actually indeed and the english and the other things are not known to me so it is a very good opportunity to have uh, non-technical uh, exercises just to to familiar with the uh, output of this training uh, after all the output of this training is just working remote or remotely or just working as a data engineer yeah? so how do we work inside how we create things how we manage things how we collaborate with remote uh, remote employer and uh, the owner the certain things uh, are clarified here i think if we do what you have shared us now let we try and if there is a complexity we will uh, dm for you if it is possible so thank you for having you okay thank you so much i'm glad to hear it uh Maren, i called you before if you're available please chat to us for a few minutes about your experience of the careers exercises okay she does not seem to be available um i have not heard from her celine in a while in the females only group yesterday if you're here can you please let us know how you've been doing and sorry if i'm not pronouncing your name properly okay remit i see that you're here if you can speak please chat to me chat to us about the careers exercises hello how are you hi i'm good how are you so my experience was good uh, especially the the real world jobs i have helped me help me to know what would be required for me even as a junior data engineer there are there are a lot of uh, requirements they need for a junior which shows me what i like in my skills and to work on them uh, as for peer mentoring yeah well i got a friend out of it which is uh, which make my network uh, one step further, which is a good thing. So, uh, about uh, this week's uh, career exercise, I haven't started it yet, but I will start it. Today's uh, slides were helpful, so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to ask one more person to speak, and then I've got another question for everyone. Um, and the meeting the session will be over in 15 minutes so samuel aline if you're here please tell us about your experiences with the careers exercises okay hello everyone can you hear me yeah i can hear you uh well the career exercise was uh, very good uh, la I guess the main advantage is seeing a big, big gap between myself and the company that wants to hire junior. I have seen that I have a little bit of uh, working to do on big tools like Spark and other data, major, data big data tools. Uh, the other one was uh, the, peer, the peer mentoring was great. I got to know uh, someone and I got to share my experience as well as he shared his. Well, it was a great insight for me, and I guess it's great. I haven't started this week yet, but I'll hope it will be great as the other ones as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Um, so I've just got a question that I want a few people to answer. What exercises do you want from the careers part of your training over the next few weeks? So you've got 10 more weeks after this. We've got a few exercises planned, but I also, Mariam and I want to know what everyone wants. What do you need to learn? What skills do you want to learn in terms of careers? What gaps do you want to fill in terms of careers? Because getting a job is not just about how good you are at machine learning or data engineering. It is also about your ability to speak to people, communicate. So I'm just going to go randomly down the list. Uh, Michael, please, if you've got anything that you want to know, and Mariam drop it in the chat or raise your hand. But Michael, can you please, is there anything you need or want to learn over the next 10 weeks? Okay, sorry, maybe can you repeat the question? Sorry. Okay, so for the careers exercises, is there anything that you want to know or learn so that we can start creating exercises for that? Is there any gaps or skills that you need to gain from the careers exercises? Mm, actually, I don't have any new things that I feel know. But the main thing that I got from this from the career training is that we are, we are more we are bonding. For example, the peer mentoring was it was superb. I was I was pairing with my friend, and it was nice. And uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I don't have anything to add. It's it's nice, and I would like to give my deepest gratitude. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, um, Remit, I think um you spoke. Is there anything you want to learn? I'm speaking about communication skills, time management skills, collaboration skills. Um. What is it that we can help you learn over the next 10 weeks? Um, and anyone can join um, the discussion or I can just continue going down the list. For me, everything has been good so far, but I think uh, I have a problem with time management and communication skills. So I would like to work on that. Okay, that's good to know. Um, if anyone else agrees with the time management, can you just say yes in the chat? So that I can see, so that we can see. Okay, got one yes. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Um, good. Okay, Mariam and I are taking notes of this. Um, and then, is communication an issue for anyone? Are you struggling to, to communicate with um, your teammates? Okay, Stella says covering interviews and improving presentations. Um, how are you all feeling about writing reports? Are you okay with that or do you think you need to improve on the skills? Okay, there's confirmation on that. So what about the writing reports? How are you doing on that? Do you feel confident about the writing reports? And I mean, you will have to, you've had to do a report already and you will have to do more probably going forward. So. We want you to, to be able to do it as well as you possibly can by the time you leave. So if you're not confident about writing a proper professional report, please let me know. Okay, Stella says tips on report writing. So I'm writing all of this down. Okay, um, and lastly, is everyone confident about how to be professional on a Zoom meeting or uh, not Zoom, Google Meet meeting? Do you all feel that you need more help 
presenting yourself on Google Meet. Thank you, Remit. Um, because remember, if you are going to be applying for jobs in the next three to six months, you're most likely going to have a virtual interview. Are you confident about being in that interview? So we are going to cover interviews, but are you confident about using Google Meet and being professional? Okay. So I guess everyone's okay with that. Mariam, we are about to close the session in eight minutes. Margaret, is that a yes for the Google Meet? You feel confident about the presenting yourself professionally? Okay. Mariam, do you have anything to say as we close out? Not so much. You've under the you've handled the session very well, I must say. Um I'll just add that um if you just take your time to um finish these tax or all your tax in general and then make sure you are relaxed, reach out to as you as you guys have been doing already, like reach out to your colleagues for help, reach out to us for help and then we're available anytime. Then we wish you all the best. Yeah, um, so we, we've started the office hours. We're going to put the times in the, um, in the careers exercises and we've taken notes on everyone's request for um, exercises going forward. And another thing I will add is please learn to slow down, as Mariam said, and learn to read the instructions properly. If you take an extra 20 minutes to read the instructions and understand the instructions on the exercises, then doing the exercise will be a lot easier. So if everyone is okay, does anyone have any questions? Um, it's like now is the time to speak. You've got about five minutes left. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please speak now. Go ahead, Faith. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, one question I have is uh, regarding um, the resources or references that we get um, under careers task. I think I think there are quite many and uh, um, it takes so much time like going through all of them uh, to find um, what you will have to use. Um, for example, on this task on Notion, we have um, six links. Um, so I don't know if you can reduce those to um, <clears throat> a handful of resources that will help us without going through all of them. Okay, that is a good point that you've made. Um, so we will take that into account going forward. Um, what I can say is if it is a lot now, that's understandable. So once you understand the assignment, once you've read the instructions properly, once you have started the assignment, in terms of the links, Start from the top on the links and if you find the information in that link that you need to complete the assignment, then use that and don't go further into the other links if it's going to take up your time. Because if you've got the information, there is no point and it's not necessary for you to go on. Those resources are actually suggestions from us. It's not compulsory or necessary for you to do all of that research and it is time consuming. So if you start on num um, link number one and you find everything in link number one, then it's okay. Leave the rest of the links um, so that you aren't overwhelmed because I know that research takes a lot of time. Any other questions? Uh, 
Um, my 